Well, hello, regular EV dad here. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, this video doesn't really fit in with anything else. It's a question. Does Electrify America have a heat problem? Yesterday, I was doing a brief 400 and odd mile trip uh, from here in San Jose down to Lost Hills, uh, sort of two thirds of the way to Los Angeles from the Bay Area. Um, and then back home, I was going to, uh, I was helping my wife out picking up, a, uh, picking up a dog, not that that matters. Because of uh, construction and uh, road repairs that are taking place on 5 southbound, it was going to be quicker for me to shoot down 101. In fact, tell you what, let me show you this on a map. So, uh, San Jose, Lost Hills, down here, Los Angeles. Uh, you know, maybe not two thirds, maybe uh, a little more than halfway. Um, because of the construction that was taking place uh, between Kettleman City and Lost Hills, uh, the road was essentially closed. It was gonna be quicker to go the long way, it only adds 10 minutes in truth, but it, traffic can be its own issue. And so I would take this, uh, the, the route here, here down 101. Crucially, because this is on the ocean side, it tends to be a, little, be a little bit cooler, and that's important. So I pulled in, and uh, if you've not seen this before, uh, Google is tracking you, and you can use this. This is my history timeline from yesterday. And sure enough, I got coffee, and then I went and charged. And I only charged for a couple of minutes. We'll come into that in a second. I then went to Lost Hills uh, to meet these people and picked up. Uh, the dog and while we we're doing all that I was charging. I then headed north, went to um, Shell, uh, to Pinot Shell, plugged in there. Uh, I'll come into the specifics in a minute, then continue north over Pachio Pass and part, part of my pronunciation into uh, the Gilroy uh, outlets, Electrify America location, come on to the reason in that minute, and then home. Ironically, well, this video is about temperature and the charges. Temperature was the reason why I was doing this. Temperature is the reason why I left the house at 6 a.m. sharp, 5.56 to be precise. Um, and I want to be clear, no issues with the car here whatsoever. Now, let me show you the data because that's where it makes a difference. So I drove down to Paso Robles, grabbed my coffee, went to the Electrify America at the Bank of America and plugged it. And it ramps straight up to 126. And we can see here, while well, I was only plugged, it, I came in relatively low state of charge. Um, it's just under 20%, and I left just over 40. Um, that's the green, the green stroke, um, pink line. There is a slight difference between them. If you've ever noticed this, when you when your yellow light comes on at 20%, that's actually 22 in the BMS. It displays a slight difference, 10% at that point, not 10% all the time, just at that point, it's on a curve, straight line curve. Now, uh, I overcharged a little bit there, because so I used that, I scrubbed off that extra, those extra ions um, uh, on, on the way to Lost Hills. When I pulled into Lost Hills, I had a very low state of charge, some three or 4%, I believe. I plugged in, um, the people I was meeting arrived. Um, they uh, they parked in a I, they, they iced a spot, but it was a charger that was not working. Um, they're not bad people. Um, they're, they're, they're they're older, so I, I give them a certain degree of slack. Um, and I got the dog and we pinged up. I looked at the screen. I saw it had gone to one twenty six, one twenty, and one twenty four. Didn't think about it. Every time I looked back, it was still 120 something. And that is true from 9.33 when we plugged in to 9.46-ish, that 13 minutes, it was 120 odd. What I didn't see is that it was dropping down to 70. And at approximately 9.46, it dropped down and it stayed there. Now, um, it was 108 degrees. Could temperature have been an issue? Well, I, I, I think so. Now, because, you know, we're charging hard, you know, I thought, well, we'll switch head. And that was a mistake. And let's talk about that for a second. 
I stopped charging at 9.55, unplugged a few seconds after that. However, the Electrify America connection, the authentication between you know, my account and the machine did not drop. I was unable to start a session immediately from the charger next to me. I had to make a phone call. And as you can see here, it took 11 minutes and 10 seconds for that to take, for that to take place. And I can tell you right now, in that 10 minutes, it was bloody hot standing up out, standing outside there. I'm not sure if plug and charge is going to fix that back office issue, that back office process issue, um, whether they're going to terminate the sessions as quickly as they need to, to allow for this kind of, you know, pardon the pun, hot swap. Um, we were only plugged in for a further 10 minutes and you can see here it was a better charge um, and given the um, pack we came in we started charging at 50 100 kilowatts at 50 is absolutely fine um, and as we increased up to 65 um, we finally came down below 74. that's a perfectly normal linear curve no issue at all but let's go to Pinot Shell so I drove up to Pinoche. Um, Pinoche is an interesting site. It's recently been expanded and had more uh, capacity put into it. Now they've completed that job, they have uh, switched off and actually dug out all of the chargers at Harris Ranch to the south, about, I don't know, 12 miles to the south. That's going to be, and that has all new Signet units going online at some point right now they're in 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 boxes and you can if you go to plug share you can see that i put some images of that but pinoche has been upgraded i plugged in and as i looked at the screen i saw 120 and i thought awesome because i only need to be here for uh 20 minutes and that 20 minutes will get me home will get me home However, after just a minute and a half, it dropped to 70 and it stayed there. It stayed there. Now I had a situation here, which was, do I unplug and plug in to the machine next to it? Or do I just change the head? See, the Tesla superchargers have a temperature sensor in the head. And uh, I'll put a link to, um, if I can find a link, I'll put it here. Uh, Carl Connor from Outer Specs has this trick where he puts a wet rag, because, you know, wet rag and electric work, but apparently they do. He puts a wet rag over the charging head while it's charging to keep the temperature down, because if the head gets hot, it will throttle the energy delivery. So I put a wet rag on this and you can see that right here at 1216, it went up a little bit. And I kept putting, and you can see here at 23 because it dried out almost instantly. It was 111 degrees, uh, I believe there. Um, those blips, I saw them on, on, on EV Notify. This, by the way, is getting its data. It's connected by, by Bluetooth. This isn't through telematics. This is from Bluetooth. Um, those things happened. I watched them happen, and then I saw them here in the data after the fact. Uh, and I, I put, just finished putting a bowl of water over the top of it. I didn't change because it was so hot, and I do not did not want to spend another 10 minutes standing outside trying to terminate and restart a session um, because of temperature, because I am trying to get home as quickly as possible so that I could get my dogs in from out, out my backyard. They have shade and everything and water, but I, I like to get them in by two um, because at two o'clock, the temperature was going to get to 80 degrees uh, at home. So I decided to stop it once I had enough charge. Um, and we can see here that I came into Gilroy with 10%, and most of that was from coming back down Patio Pass. Um, I went to Gilroy. Now, again, here it was 109 degrees. I plugged in, 
and it, this is a bit of a discrepancy because there's only one uh, hot, uh, one vertical axis here. My temperature sensor, the, the, the battery temperature was pretty much the same um, the whole way. What was different here was the inlet, and you'll notice that the battery temperature on the inlet dropped. It is not using Celsius or anything like that on the side here. The numbers might be comparable, but they're not the same. Well, actually, no, you know, I'm saying that and I realize I'm wrong. It is just using it as a nomadic scale. Interesting. So let's look at that. The battery, I, the battery temperature was 35, whereas previously it was 40. And that was normal. That was consistent. You'll see, looking at Lost Hills 1, the battery temperature increased from 35 up to 40 as it was charging at Lost Hills 1. You can see it increased further up to you know 45-ish by the end of that charge. That's perfectly normal uh, using the, the, the red line. But here, this inlet temperature was going nuts, going down and up by you know, a considerable number of degrees over a short period of time. Although the overall battery pack temperature, um, just using the maximum there, uh, stayed broadly linear. But I was only receiving 30 kilowatts of uh, power, the blue line. I didn't swap because as you can see, I was only there for 15 minutes. And again, the issue of connecting and reconnecting. And by the way, what was even awesome, so Gilroy is eight, I've done a review to it in the past, I'll put a link to it here, um, is eight chargers, all except one of them was full when I got there. And I consider that a good thing. It's gonna be a problem in the future. There was three or four ID4s. There was a Taycan, a Nero and a Bolt. I think that was it. Um, there was one, Two empty space. There was uh, there was one empty space. That unit was out of order. The screen was frozen. Um, so I didn't want to change. Couldn't change. What I could wait for someone to leave then thing. But other people had pressing needs. One guy was not using the app. Was trying to use his credit card. Apparently those credit cards readers just get fried in the heat. I can believe that. But we, I got a thirty kilowatt charge from less than 10% state of charge. That's, that's, that's nuts. Now, uh, I got home, um, I came home with 2% state of charge and I looked into the level two um, and I waited until later in the evening, you see here just before 6 p.m. And I went just down the hill here and I charged the battery up to, um, I think it was like 80%, but the charging curve was normal. And the temperature was 79 Fahrenheit. So this isn't cold gate, this isn't heat gate. There's things that we need to know. There's things I don't know and I have searched and I have looked. And so Ledge Fire America, I'm asking you, what is your guidance for charging in hot weather? And are there temperature sensors in the charging heads that whilst you don't condone, we can cool down? Should we consider as you have this two charging head per charger strategy, which as I now know, I've asked the question before, is not for resiliency, is because you might want to charge from one side of the car or the other, but would you advise going to the other head? if that's cooler because it's not being passing charge. It might still be stuck at an ambient temperature of 108 degrees, but is that something we can or should do? If you have any advice or any experience, uh, anything uh, you can share in this uh, conversation, then please uh, put it in the comments. That's what they're there for. And I'm sharing this thread with Electrify America. I would really like to hear from you. Really, I, I would. As ever, thank you. And if you have, please consider subscribing, putting a notification bell on. We've got so much more content to come. Uh, this week, uh, we'll have a uh, conversation with a fellow ID4 owner who's also done a cross-country um, trip and learn more about his experiences. If you have been, thanks so much for being here and be safe.